Hello and welcome back to Total War Rome 2, Era of Carthage here, and we are at the Battle of the Pyramids, once again seeing Bactria facing off against Pontus. We had a similar replay um, from Sol not too long ago. This one comes from Hotel Soap, and we'll see who his opponent is at the end. It doesn't... Um, I think it shows me before I load the battle, but I don't always remember the names. This is going to be a slightly different builds for both players, so I'm interested to see this one. We're going to have four Eastern Slingers up front for Bactria, and then there's going to be Scale Thorax Hoplites for Bactria. An interesting unit here. Their weapon damage is pretty subpar. It's really going to depend on cost for this unit, on what your intent is here uh, with it, because as far as damage goes, it's not all that impressive. Armor's okay. Defense is pretty solid at 61. Um, but we'll see how that unit pans out. We're going to see some mercenary Scythian horse archers facing off against four mercenary Scythian horse archers. And it's four horse archers over here as well, but two of them are Bactrian horse archers and two are the mercenary Scythians. The Bactrian horse archers come with slightly more mass, um, which may not be good if they're being chased by a lighter skirmish cavalry, but it's quite good when they're charging later in a game. And then the rest of the Bactrian army, there is a couple of levy pikes in the back and two noble horse as well as a Bactrian royal cavalry, which is a very strong lancer cavalry. And that Bactrian noble horse, remember, is going to be better pound for pound than, say, a Cappadocian cavalry like you might see from Pontus, though we do not see um, those at the moment. Let's see what Pontus did bring. They have four eastern slingers up front, those four Scythian horse archers. I see a main battle line here composed of Pontic swords, two bronze shield pikes, and four Pontic swords in total. There's a mercenary Celtic warrior on either flank, and they are supported by a Thurio spear and a single Pontic royal cavalry. Interesting, we're going to see some pretty elite pike units here, which is a risk, in my opinion, anytime they're brought to the battlefield, but we will see how this one plays out. Pontus certainly has a lot of skirmish capability, but then so does Bactria, and Bactria has an interesting position here in this scrub. Their eastern slingers are going to receive um, some cover from the eastern slingers of Pontus, so I feel like that Bactria kind of got the upper hand in these initial bow salvos over here, and we'll see whether that continues. Uh, it just really depends. Like, players have to do a lot of microing. It's, it's very intense and it's kind of difficult to manage, but I think head on here, um, Pontus is going to lose this skirmish engagement, uh, which is then going to force an attack. And that's going to be interesting because the melee cavalry. Oh, here comes something that we didn't see earlier. Forced out of hiding is a scythe chariot. So I was curious. It seemed like Pontus's army was a little bit small, and it's because it was. So a scythe chariot forced out of hiding by the horse archers and intelligently making some distance. Um, I, I feel like things for Pontus could get crazy really quick. Their infantry is a little far back to support, and a push by some Bactrian cavalry would likely find a lot of victims um, if it pushed up here. But right now, the Bactrians are happy to skirmish from a distance. A little bit of a faint charge here coming from the Scythian horse, trying to push those slingers off position. You can see an eastern slinger already down for Pontus and another one well on its way. This Bactrian noble horse now a major issue here and the Scythian horse archers having to be used in order to fix it to keep from losing more slingers. So the cavalry uh, for Pontus has kind of fallen apart and it's going to leave them in a tough position. They're basically going to have horsemen unloading bow fire into the rear of their army. So at this point they can charge or they can get shot to death. And charging is also going to be rough um, because there's nothing to support uh, except for the Pontic Royal Cavalry against the charges of that Bactrian Noble Horse. So I feel like um, Pontus is in a bit of a tough position here. If they cannot face the Eastern Slingers up front, those Eastern Slingers can kill their pikes. If they cannot face the Horse Archers in the rear, then the Horse Archers are also going to kill them. So like I said, feel like that, that Pontus is already in a bit of a rough position. Let's fast forward. I would expect we're going to see a Pontic attack. And that is the case. These pikes are moving forward in formation. Um, they probably might want to raise their pikes and run at this point because uh, they're going to come under heavy fire. But let's see what Pontus is able to do here. Um, as you are forced to attack into an enemy formation with superior missiles, this scythe chariot needed to wait a little longer. It's already taking massive hit point damage, and it's also going to take a penalty in this woods. So that's actually a pretty good situation for Bactria, that hit point damage done early. And then here comes the bracing for all of the scale thorax hoplites. So again, the scythe chariot, in my opinion, is coming in too early. 
It needs to wait until the fight is fixed a little more, but then it would still have to contend with that Bactrian Noble Horse, so it's not going to be easy. Um, the Scythe Chariots, though, are going to hit that really braced unit, and it's going to limit the number of kills, and it's also going to mean that they're going to take quite a bit of uh, hit point damage in return as those braced hoplites fix a couple of its entities, and it gets some spear attacks in. We're going to see that chariot maneuvering hard trying to get those kills. The uh, cavalry is going to be used to counter it, and that can sometimes be quite effective at delivering a ton of damage. And in this case, I imagine it will. Those side chariots got a lot of kills. They've, they've gotten already 100 kills. Um, but will it be enough is the question. The Slingers turn around and deal some major damage to the Bactrian Horse Archers, which was a nice nice touch there. But uh, those Scythe Chariots are now falling apart, and 103 kills is just not going to be enough um, for Scythe Chariots. They're going to need to do two, 300 kills um, and wrap up basically whole infantry lines in order to be uh, truly effective. The Mercenary Celtic Warriors here doing actually pretty solid against those Scale Thorax Hoplites who took the Chariot Charge. Um, but Pontus' infantry... It's going to be in a rough spot. Um, it, it, it's not going to be easy fight. What is happening here? Scale threats, hoplites? Are they a pike? I don't know. It's a levy pike unit. Okay, there's a levy pike mixed with the scale thorax hoplites. I saw a whole line of scale thorax hoplites, but I did not know that there was some levy pikes mixed in. There was two of them. That's an interesting call, because that does help thwart um, an enemy from punching through the middle of a line too quickly. So I hadn't noticed that earlier. That was bad scouting on my part. I don't know where the bronze shields ended up. It looks like one unit is here, and it is slicing through the scale thorax hoplite pretty easily uh, with the support of those Thor uh, swords. See how Pontus is doing in the back lines. They're contending with some charges from the Bactrian horse archers, which I mentioned. Uh, those uh, Scythe Chariots are getting to come back for a, a round two here, but they're kind of dangerously heading towards these pikes, which are repositioning. Um, and the Scythe Chariot is being massively slowed by the woods and just did not really get much of an effect on that second charge. Um, Scythe Chariots really need to be on open ground, and they do best when they come into a fixed infantry position. So you have them fixed from the front. The Chariots kind of work their way down the side of an enemy line. Uh, the Pontic Infantry is finding some success in certain places. You can see these Bronze Shield Pikes helping the Swordsmen to do pretty decent damage. Now look at this, we have some Pike on Pike action, which in Rome 2 is uh, kind of ugly to be honest. I saw a new feature in Total War Pharaoh where they had like an advance um, uh, stance that your army, or sorry, some of your units could stand in where they actually advance forward using their mass to push. If something like that existed for Pikes, then that would be probably what was needed to, to help pikes be more effective in combat, because in this game they kind of touch their opponent and then just sit still, uh, and it ends up uh, not being good for them with this bronze shield over here. It's got some Bactria Noble Horse fixed, and uh, some of them are being killed by the pikes, but you can see that uh, Bactria doing what you should do against pikes in this case, which is just pull back and surround them, um, and then the pikes uh, cannot face that type of maneuverability. Pontic Sword here being rear charged by that Scale Thorax Hoplite, and uh, Pontus is kind of running out of gas in the tank here. Um, the early skirmish engagement did not go great for him, and Pontus's build here was very focused on the horse archers and the scythe chariots. And what's interesting is that Bactria ended up bringing four horse archers here as well, which kind of neutralized what Pontus had done with those. And then once Pontus had spent the money on the expensive pikes, um, I think that may have been where the mistake is here for Pontus, that extra money on the expensive pikes just didn't pay dividends, and it meant that they had no melee cavalry support in this fight, um, and they just needed a little bit of melee cavalry to probably help even the odds a little bit here, um, but yeah, it was a tough one. The better terrain here for Bactria could play a role as well. This terrain does give some cover uh, to their slingers, which provided a very strong point to work from. Um, you do have to be aware of potential advantages from terrain. So a tough battle there for Dark Chicken and Hotel Soap. I appreciate Dark Chicken playing with him there. It was definitely fun. It was an interesting Pontic army in the sense that it used some combined arm pikes and swords and a lot of skirmishers, which is a fun way to play Pontus. The Scythe Chariot just didn't work out here, and that was a big deal because they're expensive. It's a big investment where you have to get a lot of damage back, and it's no offense to Dark Chicken. When you get put in the spot that he was in, it is very difficult to make the Scythe Chariots work. Um, and that obviously was intentional from Hotel Soap to try and put him in that position where those Chariots would not cause extreme damage.
Anyway, um, you can see that the Bactrian horse archers did extremely well here for Hotel Soap, and um, some of his other units doing well here too. Eastern Slingers picking up quite a few kills, as did the Scythian horse archers. And we look at the um, Pontus side, the Bronze Shield pikemen just weren't able to pay back. Um, so it, it did end up causing, and the same thing with the side chariots, they just weren't able to quite pay back. Um, so these units is where you had a significant investment without a significant payback, and it was what was probably playing a fairly major role here. In any case, hope you all enjoyed this one. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I'll see you all soon with some more action in Total War Rome 2.